Okay, I know the RF police was going to get mad at me for my last video because I used a scope probe on a spectrum analyzer. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You can't do that. I know I'm going to get tons of comments on, oh, you're going to load down the circuit and oh, blah, 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 blah. Hey, look, <laughs> if you noticed what I was doing last time when I was probing the ICs, I was probing the outputs of the any uh, 612s. And they are amplifier outputs. They're very, very low impedance. I'm not going to uh, down. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm going to load. Not going to load any RF circuit at all by probing those things, right? So what I did was just fine. Okay. Having said that, <laughs> uh, there are uh, places where you don't want to have a scope probe. Uh, touch or RF circuit because it can add capacitance. It can add resistance and stuff. It can load it down And so you need to be careful where you do probe and uh, So there's a uh, lots of people who say oh you should use an active probe or you should use a H field probe or a bunch of other things Okay, so and th those are all valid uh, every single comment is absolutely valid. Okay um, But when I'm doing my own stuff, I'm gonna do what I want <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I have these uh, uh, these H field probes, and um, this one is not covered in a in a uh, insulator. So a lot of people put these like in a plasti dip and uh, coat them up. So when you do probe around, you don't have this big ground lead that you're poking around on stuff. Um, and uh, People rightly so said I should build a, 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 a couple of these, a little tiny loop, a medium loop, and a big loop, because you're looking at different frequencies and stuff. Absolutely valid. I'm too lazy to do that, so I just have one. Okay, so the other probe that I made, uh, if you watch my probe video, uh, go search for it, um, Ian e e M probes, um, was uh, this one. And so this one is just a little piece of uh, coax with a little quarter inch antenna at the top. So it's stripped away is a little stub of center conductor that's about a quarter inch long. And I put a piece of heat shrink tubing around this one so I can poke, poke around on this one. It's not going to short anything out. Okay. Nice thing about this is it's not very sensitive. So you have to get really, really close to this little tip. Otherwise, you're not going to see anything. So it's really good at pinpointing things. Okay. So let me show you um, uh, me using this. And uh, the signal outputs are not very big when you use just this. So depending on the noise floor of your spectrum analyzer, you may want to run this into a, a low noise amplifier before it goes into your spectrum analyzer. But uh, with what I have here, the signals are strong enough and my, my uh, spectrum analyzer's noise floor is very nice, so I can just see it. So uh, first we're gonna, uh, we're gonna probe around in, in, in this area, which is where the uh, uh, local oscillator is the uh, three three megahertz oscillator. Okay, so let's go take a look over there. I have the span set for two megahertz to five megahertz. So uh, our three megahertz should be over there somewhere. So I'm gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna probe around, and I know this transistor here is the transistor that oscillates, and so there it is. Okay, so I can move it around, get a nice big signal. I can do a peak search and it's at three megahertz, 3.11 megahertz. Cool. Okay. And if I uh, keep my probe there and I twiddle a knob, it, it moves back and forth just like it should. Okay. So, uh, so that's cool. And then, uh, let me, uh, let me poke around other places. All right. So, uh, nothing over there, nothing over there. Oh, what's over here? Look at that. I have a signal over there. What's that? So the peak search on that says four megahertz. Well, that's the uh, that's the down converted IF, right? I'm over I'm over here just after the uh, after the filter is kind of next to this next mixer here, so it's going to have lots of strong signals around here. Anyway, anyway, a uh, quick video just to show you a little cheapy uh, just a little piece of coax with a tiny tiny little part stripped away at the end. And it uh, gives you a, a way to pinpoint in here, put heat shrink tubing on it so you don't short anything out when you're probing around. And like I said, if the signal's too small, put it into a uh, put it into an LNA. And uh, yeah, uh, works works really good. Um, so uh, there are, like I said, there are other ones that um, have a, a capacitor 
and a resistor, I think, in the tip. Um, that's fine. It, then, it, then you have um, a, a DC couple, a DC uh, blocking right away in your probe itself. Uh, I have a, a DC block on my spectrum analyzer already. Like I said, it's it, it's insulated, so it shouldn't happen. But if it ever did happen, there is a DC block on my spectrum analyzer, so taking care of that. Um, there is another one that you can buy that is a um, basically an FET amplifier on a little PC board. So instead of running this into a LNA and then in the spectrum analyzer, the LNA basically is right right next to the uh, right next to the probe itself. So it reduces the noise in the system a little bit. So those are nice too. Um, I don't have one of those. Otherwise, I'd show you. Uh, I've just never found a need for one. Uh, anyway, there you go. Uh, probing around with uh, something other than a scope probe.